Hi, for this video, we are going to construct a 90% confidence interval. The situation that we have here is a survey of 1,500 females was done. The females were ages 18 to 64, and 996 of those females say that they have gone to the dentist in the past year. So for this one, what we are trying to do is we're trying to estimate the proportion of the population, the females ages 18 to 64 that have visited the dentist in the past year. So based on this survey, we want to come up with a conclusion about the entire population, which happens to be females ages 18 to 64. When you are dealing with a proportion or a part or a percentage of the population that you're trying to come to um, a conclusion about, you are going to use what is called the one proportion Z interval. Okay, in order to use this interview interval, the two things that you have to know, the statistics that you need to know, are the sample size. How many people did you pull? How many people did you ask? In this case, we asked 1,500. And then we need to know our number of successes. In this case, the number of successes was 996. So if you are using this confidence interval, those are the two things that you must know in order to use that. What we are going to do is we're going to come up with a preliminary estimate for the population proportion P using the sample proportion. So what we are going to do is we have to come up with P hat and P hat is found by taking our number of successes divided by the total number of people that we surveyed. So this is the same type of confidence interval that we use when we report polling information. Um, if we're trying to predict who's going to vote for which candidate, we would use the same exact method. So with this, what we have to do is we would just plug in our values. And I'm going to go ahead and convert this one to a decimal because it's a nice concise decimal. If it's an ugly decimal or a decimal that goes on forever and ever and it doesn't have an end, I tend to leave it as a fraction because then you get more accurate calculations. But this one is exactly 0.664. And I put the approximate symbol that's misleading. This is exactly 0.664. And then we need to also find Q hat. So P hat is our probability of success or the proportion of the population that answered yes, they have visited the dentist. Q hat is found by doing one minus P hat. So this is the probability of failure. So in this case, we would do the one minus 0.664 and we end up with 0.336. We have to use both of these in order to find um, the information that we need even to use this interval. So for this, the conditions that must be met, the assumptions and conditions that must be met, the one that is critical and I've seen in all textbooks that I've taught from is n times p hat has to be greater than or equal to 5 and n times q hat has to be greater than or equal to 5. If this is not true, that means that the normal model will not give us an accurate estimate. So because this really is a binomial situation, you either have a success or a fa failure. Either they have gone to the dentist or they have not gone to the dentist. Um, it's really a binomial situation. But as long as you have a large enough sample size, when you're dealing with the sampling distribution of the sample proportions, all the different proportions that could happen from the population of size 1500, the normal model kicks in using basically the central limit theorem. It's um, the same thing. As you continue to sample over and over again, the distribution of all of the possible proportions end up emulating the normal model. So this is the condition that must be met in order to use a z-score um, from the normal model.
So for this one, n times p hat would just give us the 996 that we started with. And so we know that 996, this is just the number of successes. Our number of successes were 996, which is definitely greater than or equal to 5. And our q hat would be 504. I can either find that by doing 0.336 times 1500, or I can do 1500 minus 996. But either way, we end up with something that's greater than or equal to 5, so that condition absolutely has to be met in order to continue. Um, some of the other textbooks, like the textbook I currently teach from, this is the only one that they require you to list out. So make sure that you refer to your textbook. Um, some other things that um, typically are looked for is they have to be independent samples. So each female that answered the question should be independent of the next one, or the probability of success remains constant throughout. Um, and you have to have a random sample. We do have a random sample. This is important for all textbooks. Um, random sampling has to be done to make sure that it's representative of the entire population. And the last one, like I said, this is found in some other textbooks that I currently teach from. Um, you have to pull less than 10% of the population. And if we think about it, 1,500 is definitely less than 10% of all females ages 18 to 64. So I would just check your assumptions and conditions based on the textbook that you are using because, again, as I have said frequently, um, the stats textbooks are not at all consistent in how they give the information or the things that they are looking for. So we have enough information to use the one proportion z interval. We are okay to use this. We're okay to proceed. So let me go ahead and give you the formulas. Again, there are multiple formulas um, out there in the textbooks. The two that I have used in textbooks that I have taught from is p hat plus or minus z star, where z star is just the critical z score that corresponds to the level of confidence that you are doing. And then it would be times the square root. This is going to be the margin of error right here. We're going to do the square root of p hat times q hat divided by the sample size. So we would take the square root of p hat times q hat divided by the sample size. Um, like I said, other textbooks that I have worked from also use this formula instead where they say p hat minus e and they put the population proportion. Um, we use p to represent the population proportion. I know most of the time in statistics when we're dealing with parameters, we use Greek letters to denote the parameter. Um, and remember the parameter is just any information about the population. In this case, we use P to represent the population parameter only because of the fact that the Greek letter for P is pi, and that would confuse a lot of people. So um, you may have a textbook that opts to use pi, uh, but that is just something, again, that is up to the author of the textbook. So for this, we would do p hat minus e and p hat plus e, where e represents the margin of error. Um, some textbooks denote this as me. And so I'm just trying to make sure that I throw out all of the information because I don't want you to be confused. Oh, that's not how I learned it in class. It must be something different. It's just that there are a lot of options for stats textbooks, and they all tend to do things a little bit differently. So with this, the E is found by doing ZC, which is the same thing as Z star. So if your textbook uses Z star or if it uses ZC, they're both talking about the critical value for Z that corresponds to the level of confidence. So with this one, because we are using 90% confidence, um, we would go to our table to find our Z star or ZC. And with this one, remember that you have options. You can either use the standard normal table and look for the area. I find that it's easier to use the T table because the very bottom row is always going to give you your normal model. And then we can look for the level of confidence. Because we want 90% confidence, we would just use the 1.645. 
And now we have all of the information that we need to plug our information into our formula. So what I would do is I would take my p hat. Um, I'm just going to use this first formula and just plug in all of the information. That way I don't have to plug it in more than one time. So my p hat is 0.664 plus or minus, and then we would do the 1.645. So you would just put this into your calculator twice, once with subtraction, once with addition. That's what the plus or minus means. The 1.645, remember, is what we just substituted in for Z star. And then we would use our P hat, which is 0.664. Our Q hat, which is 0.336. And then we would divide by our sample size. In this case, our sample size is 1,500. And you do want to make sure that the entire thing is underneath the radical. Because if you don't put the entire thing in the radical, then you are going to end up with the wrong answer. I have already run this through my calculator and written down the answer. So for this, the if I take the 0.664 minus the 1.645 times the square root of 0.664 times 0.336 divided by 1500, the lower bound ends up giving me 0.64394. And then the upper bound gives me 0 0.68406. So for this, what we would then do is interpret our decision. So remember, when we're interpreting a confidence interval, no matter what kind of confidence interval that we are using, we always write the confidence interval basically the same way. So we would say with our level of confidence, so in this case, 90% confidence, and this time we are talking about a proportion. We can say the proportion of females, that is our population that we're looking at right now, the proportion of females. And then I'm going to just put in parentheses that this is ages 18 to 64. And then we would put in the context who have visited the dentist in the past year is between 64.4% and 68.4%. The way that a news outlet may report a findings with a proportion interval is they may some, say something like this, um, that 66.4% with a margin of error or plus or minus, in this case it would be a little over 2. Um, so they may write it with the plus or minus the margin of error where they just calculate this value here instead of reporting it as a confidence interval. As always, thank you for watching. Um, please make sure to check out all of the other video content that I have.